Taking into consideration all of the key parameters we've discussed previously, CHEM21 project developed its own metrics toolkit. This unified metrics toolkit allows the CHEM21 consortium to assess the green credentials of each new reaction or pathway developed, make direct comparisons between transformations. This allows the current state of the art to be assessed and gives a baseline against which to compare new discoveries. It allows us to highlight reactions of promise, as well as highlighting hotspots or areas of concern. This is in order to aid chemists in targeting their research to the areas where it will have the greatest effect. It also measures the success of the project. An additional benefit is that it has been also training researchers to think critically about sustainability and environmental acceptability by analysing and making improvements to their synthetic roots. So what else do we have to take into consideration when we were producing the metrics toolkit? Well, provision of an objective method for making comparisons of greenness of chemocatalytic, biocatalytic and whole cell processes was very important for the CHEM21 project and we needed to create a level playing field. We also appreciated that the metrics toolkit would not ever be able to cover everything and remain practical, so compromises had to be made. A delicate balance had to be struck to make sure that the toolkit was comprehensive enough to cover key parameters, whilst being straightforward enough to be easy to use. The metrics adopted need to be simple, but not simplistic. The parameters also needed to be practically and consistently measured in a laboratory-based setting. So following a large amount of surveys, case studies, literature searching, this led to the blend of qualitative and quantitative parameters which were selected and agreed upon by the whole CHEM21 consortium. When it came to deciding upon a scoring system for the toolkit, a decision was made not to adopt a numerical scoring system. This is because we felt that the assignment of an overall number or score to a reaction or methodology would not provide a meaningful way of assessing its greenness. And this is because you cannot easily identify areas of concern or where improvements have been made. We decided instead on a visual indicator of acceptability via a flag-based system, where green is preferred, amber is acceptable with some issues, and red is undesirable. Amber and red flags in the metrics draw users' attention to concerns and issues, although they do not necessarily indicate an outright ban, rather that the user should seek further information, considering why the flag has been produced and what means can be taken to improve this issue. Again, a holistic approach was very important, and the toolkit boundaries were set from raw materials to isolated product, i.e. cradle to gate. This meant that the toolkit also considered reagent preparation and renewability, as well as isolation and purification methodologies and downstream processing. It is a fundamental principle of the toolkit that no parameters should be viewed in isolation, and the impact on the overall metrics should always be examined when changing a parameter in order to see the bigger picture. So if by making a modica modification to, for example, the temperature of your reaction to milder conditions led to a detrimental effect on other metrics such as mass efficiencies, then it is likely that this change is not beneficial in terms of overall greenness. The toolkit was specifically structured with a series of passes to cover everything from benchtop research right through to industrial scale with increasing level complexity making the toolkit both user-friendly and comprehensive. These levels allow the toolkit to be used quickly and easily to support regular monitoring and iterative process improvements by researchers, whilst covering the key parameters in sufficient depth. Every reaction and transformation within the CHEM21 project goes through the zero-pass screening reaction, with the most promising progressing through the remaining stages 
as they are scaled up. The bench scale toolkits, zero and first pass, The zero pass toolkit is intended for use at discovery level, where a large number of reactions are carried out on a small scale. This is a light touch assessment which identifies the use of highly hazardous substances and gives initial indication of efficiency. The data required to calculate zero pass was kept to a minimum. Zero pass only indicates whether a reaction has any serious issues and should not be used to state that a reaction is green. First pass is intended for use on promising reactions progressing from zero pass. This is for reactions that show potential and are being optimised and scaled up. This is a more comprehensive assessment than zero pass and covers the majority of the key parameters. You can find more about the zero pass and first pass metrics toolkit and the detail of them in the metrics toolkit interpretation video, but just to give you an idea of what they include, Zero pass covers yield, selectivity, atom economy, reaction mass efficiency, solvents where only the most highly hazardous solvents are identified and given a red flag, and health and safety, where again only the most hazardous toxic chemicals are identified and flagged. First pass is more comprehensive. It includes yield, atom economy and RME as with zero pass but it also includes mass intensity or process mass intensity. It's a more detailed look at the solvents, the catalyst or enzyme, if it's employed, it's analyzed, the use of critical elements is assessed, the energy consumption is assessed, the reactor and whether it's in flow or batch is looked at, the workup procedure is looked at, health and safety, which is more stringent, chemicals of concern, availability and applicability. If you'd like to find out more detail on each of these, please look at the Metrics Toolkit interpretation video. Here is a downloadable poster that is available on the Chem21 website, which you can easily pin up in your office and laboratory as a quick and easy to use reference for the first pass metric toolkit. The second and third pass toolkits are industrial toolkits. And these are thorough analysis of the data gathered from pilot scale research and beyond and cover the rest of the key parameters. Second pass is aimed at pilot scale research. These are reactions on a 2 to 10 litre scale if in batch or if in flow greater than 1 kilogram of product in less time than, less time than required to run the benchtop reaction in first pass. Reactions that have been shown to be highly promising at first pass are assessed by second pass and this allows the assessment of scalability of the reaction and determination of whether green and financial goals are met. Third pass is done after successful completion of pilot scale reactions and is a desk based exercise. This provides an assessment of the feasibility of process at an industrial scale. To encourage adoption of metrics and support sharing and analysis of data by a widely dispersed Chem21 consortium, the toolkit was embedded in an electronic laboratory notebook developed at the University of Leeds. For all others, the toolkit is freely available in the form of a user-friendly Excel spreadsheet. The link is given here. This is the supplementary information of an open access publication in green chemistry which explains the rationale behind the Chem21 metrics toolkit and the methodology employed. And I would encourage you to have a look at this paper in more detail.